Hello everyone, welcome to the coaching session for Bathurst. I will be uh, running through one of my hot laps here, giving a couple pointers and tips for you guys to maybe look out for on your own laps. And uh, then at the end I'll, I'll kind of do a run through of the lap just in, in real time so you can kind of see everything again and kind of what I'm looking for. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll start off here. So going down to turn one, past the start finish line to start the lap. Um, I'm looking for the brake marker just past the 100 marker um, and what I'm actually looking for is the change between the Audi Sport and the Ice Break um, banners on the side of the track. That, that's kind of my rough um, braking point, um, mostly because sometimes the brake markers get taken out during the race. Um, so that's what I use for a rough estimate for the first corner. Um, and Unfortunately here it's a little bit different because we're on the outside of the car, but inside the car, um, once it goes past my peripherals, that's that's kind of where I'm looking for my braking zone. Uh, so heading into the braking zone here, you really want to come to the inside as much as you can, but you really want to avoid taking too much of this curb. Because um, if you take too much of the curb, it's just going to unsettle the car, and you're going to have not a very good exit coming out of the corner. And because of the corner exit here in the first corner is so important to... Uh, maximize the amount of speed that you can carry down the street. You don't want to take too much curb on the inside. However, on the exit, you do want to run out as wide as you can um, to allow you to carry as much speed as possible. Um, some cars don't handle this curb super well. Uh, you can kind of see here where I'm almost straddling the curb. Um, and in the Aston, that's acceptable. Some cars, it's not. So it's really going to be car dependent here. But you can um, run your right side wheels onto this curb and you definitely should to maximize the amount of speed. Uh, so going down to turn two here, you just want to, you know, keep it planted. I like to set myself up on the left side of the track just to get ready for the corner and that way I'm not trying to do it late in the zone. And for a braking marker here, I'm actually going to use this asphalt cutout on the left side of the track. Um, I like to use the end of it as my kind of braking zone or braking marker, I guess, um, to prepare myself for the corner. It's uh, this one is a little bit tricky because it is it is cambered. Um, so if you are too far out on the left of the corner, uh, it it really doesn't help you, you know, keep a lot of corner speed. You're going to get kicked out and pushed off to the side of the track where you have to lift. Um, so you want to cut in as much as you can. I didn't quite hit the apex here and get as tight as I want um, but it, it, it's good enough to be able to ride the camber for the corner and still carry a bunch of speed through here um, this is another curb where you don't want to ride it too much or get any tires on it because it will unsettle you um, so yeah there's not much more uh, and you can ride out on the exit of the corner get the power down quickly and you can ride this outside curb like I am here um, it will unsettle you a little bit, but it shouldn't be too bad in certain conditions. It might unsettle you more, but you really want to strain out your steering and um, and ride this curb to carry speed. Next is turn three. You want to get out to the right as much as you can um, to maximize the or minimize, uh, sorry, the angle that you're going to take for turn three. And you want to keep it flat through here and get as tight as you can to the barrier because you want to be able to carry your speed. And for me, getting into this braking zone is actually really tricky. Um, a, a lot of people do different things. Some people lift early and, and kind of coast in and brake. But I like to um, kind of as soon as I get around that corner, almost get on the brakes immediately and then kind of feather it into the corner. Um, if you're attacking, you can definitely get around and then brake late and dive in. But this corner will definitely ruin your lap a lot. So... Um, you definitely want to be able to break soon rather than later. Um, and another thing about this corner shoe is there's a lot of camber to it, right? So if you're going to go too much on the right, you're going to completely miss this corner and you're probably going to end up in the barrier. So you want to make sure that you break and get in as tight as you can and use the camber of the corner to um, carry speed around it. And because you're able to carry so much more speed, you're actually able to get on the throttle a lot sooner than um, most people think. So definitely taking it as tight as possible and utilizing the camber for the corner to get around. Um, coming on the uphill, 
you're just going to want to keep it flat through all these corners you know keep as tight as to the walls as you can not taking too much curve here because it will unsettle you again uh, you're going to want to run out as wide as possible to minimize this corner on the uh, next as well because it's all about carrying speed through the mountain section here so you want to stay out wide cut it in as much as you can um, again obviously you don't want to take this curve because you're right up against the wall but you do want to be able to um, take this as tight as possible because if you're out too much on the left you're going to have to lift and it, you're going to lose a lot of lap time uh, you can see here that I do a slight lift with the throttle as well um, I like to do that on a lot of the corners here just to make sure that I'm not pushing too much and going to hit the wall I'd do it for um, a car balance type thing but you should be able to take this section flat out uh, you're going to drift to the left here as well um, just naturally and still flat out coming down to the downhill section you're actually going to want to run out to the right here and get pretty close to the wall um, if you're too far to the left you're not going to be able to make this left hand or flat out um, or even carry a lot of speed through it so you want to get as close to the right as you can and turn in um, get as close as you can to this curb again but not touching it because this curb will unsettle the car push you out far to the right and you're going to end up in the wall um, you can also see that I, I actually lift quite a bit here um, some cars you can take flat out um, it really depends on how much downforce you're running how much weight's on the car with the fuel load um, but I, I, I tend to lift here most times just to make sure that I'm, I'm safe getting through this section of the track because um, you really don't want to risk it especially in race conditions um, running into the wall or, or scraping the wall and and potentially ruining your race so sometimes coming through the mountain it's a little bit better to be safe than not safe especially in race conditions so that's that's my tendency with it uh, here he'll run as wide as you can to the wall and just trying to maximize the amount of speed that you're able to carry you know getting back on the throttle and then coming down for this left hander um, you can see that I actually lift again just to be able to bite the nose and make sure I get turned in on this corner because I don't want to just go flat out and end up in the sand so I do a slight lift not completely off the throttle but enough that I'm still in it um, to get the nose to bite so that I can get to the left side of the track here I probably don't maximize um, as much of the track as you're able to some cars are able to run on this curb quite a lot um, some aren't just because the curb ends quite abruptly right at the end here um, so you really have to watch out for that but you want to run as, as uh, tight as you can and then for the exit you're going to want to run out onto the curbing again maximizing the amount of speed that you're carrying coming off the corner um, and yeah so do that and now probably one of the trickiest parts of the track uh, in a lot of people's opinion just because of, of how sketchy it can be coming over here and how easily the car can get unsettled. Um, so one of the tricks that I like to do here is come to the corner and actually give a dab a break and downshift. And what that does is it, it settles the car out because you're already going to slow the slow the car down and you're actually going to dip the nose of the car. So that's going to put a lot more bias on the front of the car and it's going to help a lot as you come over the crest of the hill. Um, because if you just carry all your speed going over the crest of the hill the nose is going to lift and as soon as you try hitting the brakes you're just going to instantly lock up and slide right through all these corners so what I'll do is just a dab or brake downshift to settle the car out and that gets the nose planted a little bit more and that prepares me to come over the crest and then reapply the brakes so I'm on the brakes downshift off the brakes to go over the crest and then you'll see me come back on the brakes here to um, to downshift again as I turn in to the right part of the track and then I will downshift come to the left hit the curb here and on the brakes again to downshift again to set up for the right hander and it's kind of a weird double apex type corner um, but you want to stay as to the right as absolute possible with this corner um, so that you can carry as much speed through the left hander on uh, the next section here um, 
I like to do a break and then actually downshift to first, especially in the Aston because its acceleration isn't the greatest, but a lot of cars you can actually carry second gear through here and um, potentially carry a lot more speed, but you definitely want to get to as far to the left as possible without obviously contacting the wall, um, and then get on the power as soon as you can to drive out of the corner. And you want to cut this as much as you can to the right. Um, this curb will sometimes unsettle the car and you can have weird bounces off it, um, but most of the time it, it's, it's pretty safe and you won't really run into that sort of issue. So cut as much as possible, staying full throttle, come to the left as much as you can and hug the left hand side of the track. And then hug the right hand side of the track as close as you can because it's all about maximizing what you can out of the track. And similar to the top part of the downhill section, um, again, I'll downshift a little bit early and get a on a little bit of the brake just to slow me down a little bit as I come over the crest. Because if I try to do all my braking after the crest of the hill, I'm just going to plow right through the corner and potentially not make it. Um, so again, yeah, I, I just play it a little bit safe and downshift and get the balance in the car so that I can come off the brakes and then back on the brakes as I come over the crest. And then really it's just trying to slow the car down as much as possible and um, sticking to the left hand side of the track because there is camber in this corner as well. Um, so it helps a lot to be on the left hand side of the track. If you're out too far to the right, you're, you're going to be offline and, and really need to slow down or potentially in the wall. Um, so again, stay as left as you can. I didn't quite um, slow the car down enough in this corner to be as tight as I want. Um, because again, this is one of those corners where you got to slow yourself down, but also prioritize the exit of the corner because of how long the next straight is. So um, it's kind of difficult to explain, but you want to slow down, stay as tight as you can, and then get on the power as soon as you can to drift out to the right, getting as close to the wall as you can, and just keep the power down. So again, like any other straight, you just want to minimize the amount of weaving and stuff that you're doing down the straight and, and direct yourself to where you want to be ending up at the end of the straight and for the end of the end of the straight you want to drift over as much to the left as you can crossing over this won't invalidate your lap um, just to be able to get as much turn in as you can coming through here and then for this braking zone I like to go about between the 150 and the 100 braking zone marker I know um, it's going to be really easy if the brake markers are there, but if they're not, it, it, it can be very difficult to pick out a braking zone. And um, it's one of those things where I can't quite get it in this view. I might be able to do it in free cam here and kind of explain it. Um, but there's a, there's a slight dip in the road as you're coming down. Oops. Um, between the 150 and the 100 braking zone. And I actually can't quite get it as I want it. So um, there's just a slight little dip there, and you'll actually be able to notice it a lot more in the car. And that's kind of what I use to, to judge my braking zone if these brake markers aren't actually here. But if they are here, I use about a 125 braking zone um, to be able to brake into this corner. And you want to drift out as far to the right as possible under braking so that you can take as much of the corner and carry as much speed as possible, um, coming as close as you can to this apex without riding too much curb. Um, it, it does unsettle the car quite a bit again, and you'll end up kicking out the rear and, and losing a lot of traction on your drive off the corner. So kind of drift out as wide as you can to the right, coming out of this corner, and hug it as much as possible. And once again, drift out to the left as much as possible on corner exit carrying as much speed as you can and coming down to the final corner of the lap um, I like to use just after this hundred and another really good one if this hundred board gets taken out is to use the oops, let's move here so these start marks um, inside the car you'll be able to see where this number 64 it's the second one um, of the starting lines. That's what I'll use as a brake marker from inside the car. So as soon as I see that second starting position disappear, 
that is when I want to start getting on the brakes or just slightly before I'm going to be crossing over it. Um, that's my visual indicator for braking when this board isn't here. And that should prepare you quite well enough for the next corner um, and slow you down nearly much. It should slow you down enough for the corner. Uh, so you want to stay out as right as much as possible without touching the grass because that's just going to um, make you slide. Get as tight as you can to the apex of the corner without t taking too much curb. Uh, I again, like a lot of the curbs here, they will unsettle you um, if you take too much of them. So you want to get as close as you can, but not taking too much. And then, yeah, just get your drive off, run out on this curb, because you want to utilize as much track as you can. And yeah, that is a lap of Bathurst.